everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today, I bring to you my November wrap up. So for the month of November, I read eight books in total, which surprised me, but I did DNF one book. So in total, I read seven books. It's also kind of cheating because I finished up some books that I started in October. But anyways, they count toward my November total. There were eight books in total. One of them was a DNF. And I had the one readathon to rule them all in the smack dab in the middle for that. And I ended up finishing four books for that readathon. So that's, you know, where, I, where I'm at. I had a pretty good reading month overall. So the first book that I want to mention is, I don't have a physical copy of it. I did listen to it on audiobook. And that is The Hate You Give written by Angie Thomas. This book uh, changed me. I changed my life. I did give it five out of five stars. I only have one word to describe this book and that is powerful. It moved me in so many different ways and I had so many different feelings about it. But for those of you who don't know, The Hate You Give is about a young woman named Star. She ends up being the sole witness to her friend's murder by a police officer. There are two young black kids growing up in uh, what can only be described as the ghetto and she balances her life between living in the ghetto and going to this really rich private school. The beginning of the book I had so many thoughts about because uh, the writing from Star's perspective, the narration from the audiobook, brought all the feelings out of this shared collective grief of a family who was uh, struck by a, a tragedy. And it moved me because I ended up experiencing something similar in terms of uh, collective grief, shared family tragedy. My cousin died this summer from a tragic sudden accident and processing all of those emotions right away, uh, the things that Star was processing, the things that her family was processing in terms of the grief aspect really moved me and I was brought to tears a couple of times. It was just a lot of powerful emotions that were brought out of me. Um, so that in itself was something that I was uh, processing while I was listening to this book. But then the other part of it, um, talking about the code switching and, and uh, being one person when you're really trying to be this person and how will these two worlds collide. And growing up as a person of color in a predominantly white area, um, I went to a pretty good school, but being one of the only kids who was othered because of the color of my skin, there were definite things that I related to Star to, and again, just brought out really powerful emotions for me. There were just so many things that it made me think about, and I'm really glad that I listened to this book. I will probably purchase a physical copy of it because it was just so powerful. Um, and then, of course, the rest of the books that I read were all fantasy books. So let me get started. Oh, I think I'm going to go a little bit out of order. One of the first First books that I picked up for the month of November is Valor, written by John Gwynn. This is book number two of the Faithful and the Fallen series. I am participating in the Faithful and the Fallen read-along that's being hosted by Frankie Reads over on her channel. And when I saw that she announced this readathon, I was like, oh, that's perfect, because I read Malice a number of months ago. I think it was like April that I read Malice, which is the first book, and I hadn't had any motivation to pick up the rest of the series just because I was reading, trying to read so many different things. And so this gave me the motivation that I needed to be able to pick this book back up and, and start on the second book of the series. This book takes place immediately after the events of the first book. Um, and so it moved so much faster for me than Malice did. I had some complaints about the first half of Malice being the setup to all this action that took place at the very end. And then this book, I feel like we already had the setup. I already knew who the people were and it was just constant action moving forward. We're traveling around the country. We're trying to find family members. We're dealing with slavery and fighting pits, this ultimate good versus evil and character deaths. And it was really great. I liked this one better than the first one. So I did rate this four out of five stars. Another set of fantasy books that I finished up in the month of November. This is Saint's Blood, written by Sebastian de Castell, and then this is Tyrant's Throne. This is book three and four of the Great Coat series. I finally completed the Great Coat series. The audiobook is so awesome. The narrator is amazing. He does really great voices, um, and that's what kept me going through this series. Saint's Blood, to me, out of the whole series, and I plan on doing a whole series review now that I've finished all four of these books. Saint's Blood, to me, was uh, the 
the least the book that brought the plot forward the least does that make sense the first two books i really felt like brought the story somewhere this one didn't necessarily bring the story forward in my opinion so i did rate this one four out of five stars um, but as we start the third book each of these books have their own main adventure and the plot line for this book is that the saints of tristia are being hunted down and they're being encapsulated in these iron masks and their powers are being uh, stripped from them. And so Falchio and the Grey Coats are trying to figure out what is happening to the saints of Tristia. Then Tyrant's Throne is the book that wraps us all up. This was a beautiful conclusion. I rated this book five out of five stars because I just thought this conclusion was one of the better conclusions of a series that I read. Um, it brought so many different pieces together. I didn't feel like there were any loose ends that we had to deal with. The way that the characters all progressed throughout this series I thought had really great um, character arcs and character endings in this book. So I absolutely loved the journey that this uh, whole series took me on. This one would be like, if you like the Lies of Locke Lamora, the Gentleman Bastard sequence, I think you'll really enjoy uh, the Great Coat series. But again, I do plan on filming an entire series review of uh, all four books in the series. All right, so Tyrant's Throne was one of the books that I finished for the one readathon to rule them all. That was actually, you had to read a book that was the conclusion to a series or the most recent installment of a series. So Tyrant's Throne ended up concluding the Great Coat series for me, so that's why I finished it off. Uh, but the rest of the books that I have read were solely dedicated for the one readathon to rule them all. And the first book that I ended up reading was The Bear and the Nightingale, written by Catherine Arden. And I mentioned in my favorite fantasy reads video that I had so many people tell me how beautiful this book was, but I think it was way undersold. Even after all of that, like nobody like could fully explain why this book was so beautiful. And I understand now, I get it now. I rated this book five out of five stars. As you can see, I started annotating my books and I just tabbed the shit out of this book. It was so beautiful. This book follows a young woman through a big chunk of her life from um, starting before she was born and then into young womanhood. Um, her name is Vasilisa. She's growing up in the Russian woods in the Russian wilderness. Her father has to remarry and once he remarries he brings his new bride back home and so there becomes some new tensions between the old ways and the new ways. The old ways of the Russian wilderness and the new ways coming in from Moscow. The new Christian religion versus the old folk tales and old stories that they tell and this book just interwove the setting and the magic in such a complete beautiful way it was so beautiful like I, I don't I understand now why nobody could really tell me how and what to expect from this but it was just so magical um, there was just magic permeating through every page. Um, there's there's forest spirits, there's house spirits, uh, there's a creepy priest. I really enjoyed Vasilisa's relationships with every single member in her family, um, especially the relationships that she has with her brothers. I just feel like they really watched out for each other. I loved this book so much. I gave this five out of five stars if you couldn't tell. Um, and I'm so glad I finally could pick this book up and now I'm just like, why did I wait so long? Um, the next book that I read was Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow, written by Jessica Townsend. This is book number two in her uh, Nevermore series and this is so much fun. I rated this five out of five stars as well. I also tabbed this book. This book is uh, the second part in the series following Morgan Crow and her new adventures in uh, Nevermore. And she has been accepted into the Wondrous Society Society, and it follows her in her journey of um, getting acclimated to the Wondrous Society and is it living up to her expectations. I was trying to pinpoint like the things that I really loved about her. I said like I wrote a couple different notes and one was like I just fucking love the Hotel Ducalion and all the staff. That was one of the notes that I wrote because they're so great and they stick up for Morgan. And um, the things that I love the most about this book are just her sense of wanting to belong somewhere and wanting to have a family and the Hotel Ducalion like really plays that family role for her. <sighs> I love this book. I, I've mentioned Nevermore a couple different times on my channel already and now I'm bringing you Wondersmith. I just love them. They're really the only middle grade novels that I've like fallen this hard for in a very long time, but I gave it five out of five stars as well. Okay, so this is The Tiger's Daughter written by Kay Arsenal Rivera. And this 
surprisingly, was the book that I ended up DNFing. I picked it up for the one readathon because I thought I was gonna fulfill all of these different challenges for having a book with LGBTQIA plus rep, for having persons of color as the main character, for having a non-European uh, setting, fantasy setting, for having a person of color author. I thought I was gonna fulfill all sorts of things. And I started on this book, I got, um, like a little over a third of the way through this book before I decided to DNF it. And it, it hurts me that I had to DNF this, but I ended up DNFing it. So this tells the story of two young women um, in the Hokoren Empire. It follows Oshizuka and it follows Shefali, who is her best friend growing up and they do end up falling in love. And the story is told through letter format. Shefali is writing a letter to Shizuka, uh, telling the story of their love and their life together. Um, and it moves really slow. I was prepared for that. I was prepared for how slow it moved and I was ready for like really great Asian representation. But the closer I looked at this book, I was like, just because there's Asian representation doesn't mean that it's good representation. And that's why I ended up DNFing it. I am part Chinese and there were just some references. Like they kept saying rice tongue and rice eater and flat-faced and just the kind of fetishization, this Asian fetishization was kind of brought out in Shizuka and Shefali and I didn't really appreciate it. It made me really uncomfortable. I also read a review from a Japanese woman who had not good things to say about the Japanese representation in this book and again it was just like just because there's Asian representation doesn't mean it's good representation and so I DNF to this book. I won't be continuing with the series. And and to be honest, like not that much happened in like the third of the book that I ended up reading. We were still just getting to know Shuffley and Shizuka and, and getting to know their powers, but it made me really uncomfortable to keep reading it. And after one too many references to someone being called Rice Tongue, I was out. I was out. I wanted an Asian fantasy done well and that wasn't it for me. Um, and it, it surprised me because Kay Orson Rivera is Puerto Rican and I believe that she also would have been a, a person who was othered at some point in her life. She's a lesbian, she is Puerto Rican American and there, I have so many conflicting feelings about it because the, the two nations that are predominant in this book are enemies and uh, against one another. That's why they had these racial slurs, but it made me feel really uncomfortable. And I don't know, like something about being called rice tongue, uh, someone who is Chinese and I grew up, like I said at the beginning of this video, I grew up in a predominantly white area. Even something as simple as that, where I had rice at pretty much every meal growing up, and I would, if I had to bring food to school, it was pretty heavily Asian food. Different microaggressions that you experience as a person of color that's so hard to explain, but just something as simple as the food that I ate, which was like primarily rice, I couldn't, I couldn't keep reading that book. And I know they were supposed to be meant to be derogatory slangs toward one another. It was just like too much for me. So DNF'd that book. Super shocking to me because I thought I was gonna totally love that book. Uh, but turns out I can't even finish reading it. So what I did end up doing, um, and I already have a full spoiler and spoiler free review of this book already on my channel. This is The Poppy War, written by R.F. Kuang. I ended up uh, picking this up through a book outlet haul. I didn't actually film a video of me hauling this book, but I picked this up a while ago and I had no intentions of reading this really anytime soon, but I knew I wanted to read it eventually. And after my supreme disappointment in The Tiger's Daughter, I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna read a book about an Asian inspired fantasy written from an Asian woman's perspective. And this uh, completely uh, satiated that need. I felt completely validated in switching over to an author who was from China. And this was a vastly superior story to The Tiger's Daughter in pretty much every way. So I ended up reading this book four out of five stars. This is about a young woman named Rin and she's from a rural province in this Chinese uh, modeled country. She aced this test, the Keiju test, 
which um, determines what, school, what schools and what careers students are able to go to. She aced it, and she ends up going to the most prestigious military academy called Synagard. And it tells the story of her journey of, uh, in school, of her experience with opium, uh, her experience with shamanism, and ultimately the uh, travesties of war brought upon the country. There were just so many things that happened in this book that I felt like this book really could have been split into two, um, just because the first half was vastly different from the second half. So it gave me the things that I wanted, but I just had some issues with how the book was structured, and I just feel like it could have been split into two. You'll see more of that in my uh, Poppy War review. All right, everyone, so that wraps up my November reading journey. I had a really great reading month overall, fours and fives all across the board, one DNF. So it's not really something to complain about, really. Um, anyways, leave me some comments in the comment section below about what you thought of these books. Have you read any of them? Have you not read any of them? What do you think? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's at whatcastread, the same as this channel, so it should be super easy to find. And then if you prefer Goodreads, that link will always be down below. And of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.